Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Seat Within. I'm your host, Dr. Savvy, and today we've got a special program on SICRI, Sikh Research Institute, based over in the States. Now, we're very honored to have a whole group of people that have come over uh, to spend time with us talking about uh, the fact that there's a workshop going on on, I believe the date is the 22nd of February at Norwood Hall in Southall in Ealing. And that workshop will focus specifically on 1984 uh, in terms of equipping people with tools and knowledge that they need to effectively go out and communicate the true essence of what actually happened in 84 and how we take that message forward in terms of the fact that we really need everyone to understand what actually happened, what the background was, and really kind of being able to communicate out to the world that this kind of thing should never happen again. So I'm with some great guests today. I have Dr. Karcher, the General Secretary of SGSS. And this is based in Southall? Of course, Sri Guru Singh Sabha. It's uh, known worldwide, Havelock Road and Park Avenue, Southall. And uh, thank you for inviting us. That's great to see you. Uh, one of the biggest Gurdwaras in Europe, I believe. And also we have Sukhdeep Singh, who is, uh, I have your title down here, as Stage Secretary, very important role. And one of the youngest committee members, I think, uh, I don't want to make you blush too much, but I think <laughs> you were the youngest one to join uh, the committee um, a few years back. Why good you got called, sir? Why good you for the astronaut, yeah. I feel a bit older for you now, but that was correct. Recently. Hopefully it's not your time on the committee that's made you old. Um, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and also we have uh, Shimsher Singh here. Uh, I've met him before, we've done some work together, and uh, he represents SICRI, Sikh Research Institute, uh, and he will be at the workshop and will be uh, one of the main, I think, facilitators, is that right? Yes. Vaiguji Kakatsa, Vaiguji Kakatsa, yes, that's great. Right, so, okay, let's um, start off with yourself. Um, tell us a little bit about Sikri. I know the Gurdwara has been involved before with Sikri and they've done a, a lot of events, we can cover that off as well. But uh, where did this come about? And I know a lot of people may know uh, Sikri from the uh, lectures that Harinder Singh's done over the last few years. He's also been to Ernst & Young. He's done a lot of work uh, in a range of subjects. I believe the ones I've attended are uh, things like Gupt, uh, he's uh, done a, a workshop on uh, 1984 as well, the future of Gurdwaras, the role of the Gurdwara, the history of the Gurdwaras. So he's done a lot of extensive research on uh, where Sikh is coming from. And I believe actually Dr. Gacha, uh, there's this uh, Sogi uh, syllabus as well, isn't it, that he started? In, yeah, Soji. Uh, Soji. The Soji syllabus, yeah. yeah. So that's for preschool and uh, primary school children. And the aim for that was consistency in... Um, in the Gurdwaras in terms of what they teach? Yeah, absolutely. Not just the Gurdwaras, but also sort of looking at sort of uh, schools and nursery schools and then going on through uh, sort of infant schools and taking that forward into sort of the first, second and third year. And um, we were very happy and we, I, I think we were the only one in England who had done it back in 2004, 2004, 2005. We actually sponsored it for teachers. So we had uh, the educators coming over from America to teach the teachers here. So it was a very valuable thing. Of yeah, actually, train the trainer type yeah, of thing. Yeah. yeah, training the trainers. Right. So in terms of taking that forward, we were very honored in being able to facilitate that. And again, it shows the kind of um, interest that we had in terms of education, which we are trying to fulfill through education. And again, of holding seminars like this, which we've been doing throughout uh, with Mr. Sohi since I joined him back in 2000. Brilliant. So, Sikri, where did it come about? How did it, you know, how did it start up? It's based in Texas, is that right? Uh, yes, so Sikri uh, originated in America. Um, it's been going for a number of years now. Um, and the main mission and the focus of Sikri is to develop educational resources so that our Sikh community can live a Guru-inspired life. Um, and one of the taglines is helping you fall in love with Sikhi. Um, and, and that's the, the main mission and the focus behind the organization is to develop those educational resources like Soji curriculum so that we can all connect with the message and the philosophy of the gurus with Sikh history and we can bring those teachings and those ideals into our life and, and make them um, uh, an existing part of our life so they, they become more than just teachings, they become the way we um, conduct ourselves as uh, members of the Sikh community. Right. Now specifically on 1984, um, I know recently and we're not going to go into this in detail, but I know there was a whole uh, discussion in, um, I think, literally as close as uh, a couple of Wednesdays back in Parliament. A whole hour was spent with regards to the findings of the fact that the British were involved in a, a planning session uh, with the Indian government. So, you know, 30 years on, 
we're having these kind of discussions now. We're discovering new things. We're seeing documents that get lost or burnt or deleted or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and to a certain extent, I, I have a press article here from the Daily Telegraph that suggested that maybe this whole 1984 thing was a bit too narrow. Um, do you agree with that? Do you think it was a bit of a narrow kind of you know, revelation? Well, in terms of the report that the cabinet yeah. secretary put together and how they looked into the scope. Yeah, I think I mean, it's called Allegations of UK Involvement in the Indian Operation yeah. at Sir Hamanda Saab Amasa 1984. There has been a lot of criticism, especially from our community, that the scope of the investigation has been far too narrow and it didn't look at nearly enough documents as it should have. Um, and that's always going to be a criticism, especially when the state's uh, involved um, in such a tragic event. Um, I don't think there's anything that, that can be done now to reconcile uh, Britain's involvement with uh, the invasion of Darbar Sahib. The interesting thing that what I want to say is what I said at the beginning that we had that when the report came out as I mentioned at that time it was expected disappointment mm -hmm. because clearly when the terms were first set out for looking into the actual allegations or whatever was going on it seemed to me that the the terms of the inquiry were framed with the answers in mind and that's what you can see throughout and if you look at the language the way that it's been written it's absolutely not clear-cut really the raison d'etre the raison d'etre has not really been given as to why initially would any government think of assisting another government in its attack on a holy place now it's not just one holy place i believe about 70 to 80 other Gurdwaras were targeted at the same time. So if you look at that, uh, what it is clearly, it will be clear that you cannot say that a cabinet is not aware, other departments are not aware of what's been going on. And basically it is clear from the way the report has been written, it has not been looked into detail. And I feel that we need to have a consensus as to how we go forward. And one of the ways of building this is having events like this. Sure. And we're very fortunate to be able to mm. hold an event like this to actually take people to task in the sphere where it needs. And why we recognize that there is a weakness that we have in the Sikh community, which we've realized for a long time, that our representation at the higher echelons of political life in this country is woefully inadequate. And if you look at the Jewish experience and the Jewish, um, sh uh, shall we say, the Jewish experience or looking at the, the, the way that the Jewish community has done it, if you look, they're also very well representative in the judiciary. If you look at a lot of Western countries, if you look in the politics, they're very well re represented. And it is because we have a woeful lack of our participation in there that we're not able to take this thing forward. And you see, the, I feel that it's the lip service being paid by political parties in terms of really going into it in a big way. And the other thing that I mentioned was that if you look, when the real British people, and there are lots of fantastic British people who actually take things to heart and say, we are really going to look at it in careful and in detail, and ba based upon the principles of the Magna Carta that you might want to take back and to say, look at Macpherson, look at Scarman, look at Hillsborough, and look at Bloody Sunday. Look at what they, what they said. What they said was they realized their mistakes and then started going into it really independently. And this is what we want to look at. If you can, any government can say, well, how can you actually think of offering assistance, no matter to it be to another government, to play, to look at attacking, and that's what it is, it is attacking a holy place. As far as I'm aware, all the people in size, inside were not charged with any yeah, offense. There were a lot of, mm -hmm. there were 10,000 people plus, I think, in right. the complex at the so time. So that's yeah. what I'm saying, and the attack took place at a festival yes. at a faith festival and it's Guru Arjan Dev Ji's Gurpub, okay, which was coming up at that time and everybody knew that a lot of Sikh pilgrims are going to be there and they're not going to be knowing what's going on. Mm. Absolutely. Let me um, pick on a couple of points that you made. Mm. First of all, uh, you talk about representation in terms of, um, you know, reliable, I, I would 
say, you know, reliable, consistent, um, succinct, precise, um, you know, the ability to communicate. And I think when we were talking earlier on before the program started, you were talking about, Jim Shezing, you were talking about the 30-second soundbite that the media like to have. They also love to roll out their um, go-to people. Um, and to a certain extent, go-to people suddenly emerge, either because they're, the right, they're at the right time, or somebody knows somebody else, and they say, well, he's a, he's a Sikh, you can, you can ask him or her uh, what they think the, the situation. There isn't necessarily, I'm not saying that you necessarily have to prime people up, but the, the fact that they're articulate, as well as the fact that they're armed with the knowledge. You, you can be articulate, but not know anything. Mm -hmm. um, so the good thing about this workshop is it does teach you that, but where are these people coming from, and, and should, they not, should we not have a separate leadership type program where we see you know, the youth of today, as well as, I don't think it necessarily should be around youth, it should be around older people as well, who have lived through that experience. Because you know, there's a different Sikh lens in one sense, um, in the context of those who were there at the time and, and felt you know, what was actually happening was wrong, and those who were never born at that time, and they've been born maybe 10 years after, and they have a different experience to talk about because theirs is based on what their parents have told them or you know, what they've read. Um, so where do, where do we go from here in terms of, first of all, a leadership program, uh, and secondly, um, being a bit more careful about how we communicate with the press? Is that, isn't that two separate things? Um, <clears throat> so in terms of, uh, I'll address your points one by one, in terms of a leadership program, uh, SICRI already has a leadership program that's called SIDDIC that takes place for two weeks in America, and that has been doing so for a number of years. Um, there there aren't any immediate plans to bring it to the UK, but it is something that SICRI is going to do, be doing um, in the coming future. Um, it's happening again this year, so if anybody wants to go, I mean, I, I went to it. It's an absolutely fantastic uh, and engaging program. Um, there's more details about it on SICRI.org. Um, um, and also in terms of what you're saying about the leadership and the go-to people, um, and, the, and the skills that we need. Um, it's always been the focus of SICRI is to develop educational resources. And until we have those core competencies within our own community and not just within the higher echelons of our leadership, but the skills are shared and, and propagated throughout all levels of organization within the SIC community, whether that's student organizations, whether that's relief organizations, humanitarian organizations, um, whether that's political organizations. Once we've developed these core competencies and we're engaged with the sick narrative, um, I think then we can start really seeing some progress. And there's always going to be shortcomings, but as uh, active members of the sick community, it's our duty to make sure that we try to fill these gaps and do what we can with the time that we have and the resources that we have. Um, and that's always been the real name of the game is doing what you have with the resources you have available. Um, so one of these steps is this workshop that we'll talk about in more detail later on. But doesn't resources depend on investment as well, or maybe creating a kind of central fund? I mean, the good thing the Gurdwara in um, uh, Havoc Road has put together some funds to sponsor this. It would be great if lots of Gurdwaras got together and, and created this kind of like, not a platform, but almost like a repository of, mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, of knowledge and information. I know the Jews have got a Holocaust museum. We don't have that kind of thing. Um, I'll ask you a quick question, uh, we were talking earlier on, uh, is, there are so many inquiries that take place about 1984 mm -hmm. and we always seem to find that they kind of fizzle out, um, where is, is there a victory point that we're trying to get to when people recognize it's a holocaust or is it like the Jews who, you know, we mentioned just now that the fact that it's still resident in it and it's, um, it's in people's minds apart from the holocaust deniers. The fact that it happened, apart the fact that six million people died, sure. and they don't want it to happen again. Unfortunately, if you look in Indian history, it seems to me um, a recurrence in, 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 yeah. in our uh, experience, Sikh in, history. in a Sikh experience, um, I think this is slightly different because a lot of people use the word riot, which actually is a two-way thing. Mm, which, is, but if you look at the statistics, it's all about a pogrom. And I keep saying it again and again. Every time I see it anywhere, I'll tweet about it or I'll try and correct somebody. Uh, when it's one community battling against another community. It's very much an attack. It, it, yeah, so it's a genocidal so attempt. It's a genocidal situation. Sure. So is our path to communicate this genocide as a, uh, a thing that took place? Is, is this a continue? Is, is it on a continuum, or are we going to get to a point where we go, oh great, we've now recognised it as being a, gen a genocide, and uh, those that are guilty will be brought to justice? Well, this you know? is it. For me, there's a two-way thing. I'm just hitting on what Dr. Garcia was saying about and we're used to about all these inquiries. 
Um, Dr. Garcher mentioned um, Bloody Sunday, Hillsborough and other inquiries that have been led by the British government and ultimately what's always been asked for and which we haven't got is, 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 is transparency and independence or tribunal. And until you don't get some of own transparency, and the Gurbani says that all the time, you know, if you, it's almost asking an attacker to lead to a conclusion where he has the opportunity to wash away his sins because there's a lack of transparency. I mean, what else do this, does this one This is why expect? I think that reconciliation doesn't actually work in that case. Well, right? that's what reconciliation yeah. implies that there's negativity on both sides. It's almost like there's a glass ceiling for reconciliation because right. you, you're almost expecting yourself to say, yeah, we've got an inquiry, that's what we've been asking for. And are the seas going to meant to accept whatever the, the outcome is of this inquiry? Whereas it's probably better to kind of promote yourselves in a different way. What um, uh, some share was saying over here is with a sick research um, institute um, program coming up in Norwood Hall. For me, that's also a plus point. Like um, in terms of you measure, it's a, it's a one fit all program. For example, it's kind of aimed towards the youth, but there's no reason why we can't have an interaction between the the wider audience, the the older sangat. Sometimes in Agudwaris or uh, other workshops, it's kind of um, Punjabi dominated. Did it up to the youth here? They don't really understand what's going on. This, for me, kind of hits all the different sort of arrow points. Now, the the point you made in terms of the genocide, the Sikhs haven't ultimately and sadly for us it's a genocide. For the Western world, the, the, we haven't got them to accept that this was definitely a genocide. The sheer fact that 35 other Gurdwari on the 6th of June 1984 are simultaneously attacked upon. <laughs> it goes to show that some genocide isn't in, in 35 good ways at one time, is it? It's, it from there, it, it's, it's not a rocket scientist, you know, you need to hire to work this out. It was a definitely a genocide event. Now, if we get the people to, and the, the culprits to accept it's a genocide, now do we just sit over there and say, this is what we've been um, shouting about for 30 years, this is what we've been crying about, or this is what our grievance has been, now please accept this, and what do we do? The Jews, the Jews have a Holocaust museum, but they haven't just rested on their lovers and, and the whole world gives them a pat on their back saying, well done. They've actually got their kids, they've actually got the, the, the future generations in knowing their history, hence the memorial, by actually pushing on, now controlling world powers, now really the bargaining power comes from, from education, from the higher posts. We, whilst we don't get the, the masses to probably um, appreciate the house, it was such a sickening event, you know, very, very close to the 21st century, there's nothing stopping us educating our kids about it. So the sheer fact that we're sitting over here in the Western world discussing this, the sheer fact that on the 22nd there's going to be a, a, a seminar on this, there's going to be a workshop on this, this is basically a plus point. This is a marginal victory. Uh, historically, we can we can look at the the, the events of um, uh, Guru Gobind Singh Ji and Aurangzeb. Now, if if you was to take that 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 chapter of, of history, a great chapter it is, and if you if you was to take it into the Western world or some scholar who was who who isn't biased towards the Mughal Samrat or or towards Sikhs and didn't know anything about them. Now he would probably read that, and this is a God forgive me for this, but he'd probably read that and think, Good Gobind Singh Ji, let's get the let's get the facts straight here. He's lost his four uh, Sabjadde, he's lost his mother, he's lost his um, uh, he's lost his father. You say that to anyone else, and they probably think the the Sikhs were the losers in this battle. But the mindset is so is so high spiritually and academically because he puts pen to paper and he doesn't accept defeat. The defeat is in the Khalsa. The defeat, the victory is within the Khalsa. Kujira Khalsa, Jira Pargat Kitaya. And the sheer fact that we're in existence today is the moral victory right there. The Sikhs have to um, um, basically just go back to history and Gurbani and adhere to what Satguru tells us. The sheer fact that we don't be defeated, the sheer fact that we're sitting over here, a genocide in simple terms is to wait, basically wipe out someone's existence. But well, yeah. we're still alive here today. Well, we're still alive thing, and we're still talking about it. We're still discussing it. That in its sense, it may be small to some people, that in its sense is a very, very big victory for me. A lot of people don't also understand that there's a, there was a lot more, you know, we mentioned the 10,000 people plus that died in the complex, but there was also the uh, destruction of the museum uh, as well. To uh, Shakana, and also yes, yeah. records that were taken at the time. Um, I think if you look at you know, taking your point on Sikh history, if you look at Guru Tegh Bahadur, if you look at our Gurus in terms of the sacrifices that they've given and their families and everything else, they are shining examples of those um, revolutionaries who would not, um, you know, kind of backtrack. They would go forward and say, we're doing this for a cause, we're doing this for a reason, they're mm -hmm. doing it for freedom. And most amazingly, they're doing it for the freedom, not necessarily for Sikhi, but for the other people that are under it's for, tyrannical It's uh, for mankind, law. yeah. Yeah, it's for mankind. So whether it be a Mughal empire that is, you know, uh, doing ethnic cleansing, 
you know, we, you know, we gave our lives for that. And, and it's interesting, you know, again, if we look again and again at history, uh, you, you know this, people need to know more about this, the number of sacrifices for Sikh freedom movement, for, for uh, the freedom movement of the Brit uh, away from the British, mm -hmm. you know, the Sikhs were the ones that gave most of their lives. So the, we, the we don't seem to be able to communicate that. Is it, is it not because we don't have enough uh, Sikh scholars, but we just don't seem to be able to, uh, you know, record that. Is, is that because, which is a radical point here, I think, is there a, because we don't control the media. And if we don't actually communicate what's happened, then somebody else communicates it for us. Yes and no. And they distort it. I think yes and no. We, one, we'd, like you said, the clinic is too. Our, our history has been written by non-Sikhs. Mm -hmm. We all know this very well. Um, some of them we're grateful for it, and some of them haven't really put us in good terms. Uh, and the, the main point is, you say uh, we don't control the media. We have to have a bargaining power to get into the media in the first place. Right. Second of all, uh, we, the Sikhs don't really sing off the same hymn sheet. There's no real cohesion. Workshops like this, uh, the Soji project Dr. Gaja spoke about, it's all about cohesion. It's all about a, a systematic link from one tier to another, from the youth to the old, to the old for the future to read upon. So the, 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 the systematic sort of um, uh, the, the readings of the Gurbani that you get, we haven't had that in, in a historical sense. But this, I, I hope we break the mold over here, and I really think so. You spoke about a leadership program. It was to say the success of a workshop like this doesn't cry out the Sangat begging for a, for a leadership program. So again, it comes to the sheer fact in how you measure your sort of victory. The, say, the, the sheer fact that after taking um, so many beatings, 84, post 84, only in the post six, last six months, let's say, if you look at the, the, the political alliances that are so-called Punjab Sakar has that are meant to be controlling these Sikh affairs, that, that it, it's a very demoralizing thing. But we can actually sit here um, uh, many miles away. We yep. can sit here in Britain, we can sit here in the US, and we, we're saying that whatever goes on over there, whatever um, dirty handshakes are done, we do not accept them, and we're going to adhere to basically pro promise our future generations that the truth will come out, and it will come out in a sort of cohesive and educational way, which is what these, um, these good men are doing over here. There's a couple of other things that have happened recently. I, I know you and I were involved in the uh, Saffron Mike uh, event in Canada. They do when lions roar, and it's a creative outlet as well. Um, so that in one sense that if you have poetry and you have song and you have, mm. you know, people showing, um, mm. I would say there's another side to this as well. I was at the 1984 exhibition, actually I think it's called GT, it was, it was the uh, Golden Temple exhibition which was based in uh, uh, SOAS. Oh, yes. Yeah, mm. and, uh, and I think it was named after the date when the Golden Temple was actually constructed. Yeah. And there was uh, an event that took place, a networking event, I was there, and some girl um, put her hand up and said that, uh, you know, how come Sikhs are not known for all the selfless service that they do and, uh, and the fact that they've got lunger and they've got the fact that they, uh, they go out and do lots of charity work, for example, Khalsa Aid and Sikh Aid and other people do, United Sikhs do a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And she made a really interesting point. She said, the more that we're in the, in the, in the media communicating, not necessarily being not humble about it, but just talking about what we've done, you know, then that kind of portrays Sikhs as being part of that, those kind of saviors for humanity, that that is our real essence. Um, so there's another avenue that we can choose. We can do education. When they're better educated, they can learn more, do more about the practicing aspect of Sikhi in terms of being more humane and doing humanitarian work. But on the other level, if they're artistic and they're able to write poetry books, they're able to write songs about what happened. Um, I mean, you've got an art, a couple of artists coming to this event as well? Um, yes, so we have the um, Singh Twins, uh, Amrit and Rabindra Kaur. Mm -hmm. um, they're quite famous for their depiction of um, the Dwar Sahib after mm -hmm. the attack. Um, so they're going to be showing a short film that they've put together um, about their personal journey with 1984. It's called 1984. Um, and they're also going to be talking about how you, through artistic expression you can express um, your ideas and you can connect with a trauma that you've experienced. I think that's a, a very important outlet and something that we can do as a thing to do um, as an outcome for this, um, uh, this activism. But I think uh, essentially if we look at the model of the gurus, um, all of the gurus were community builders, they were nation builders, and they developed community resources and, and they focused a lot of their energy on dealing with issues that were affecting their community. Uh, and it's undeniable um, this year we're going to have the 30th year since the attack on the Rar Sahib that this affects our community. I mean, growing up in Southall, this has affected us in, in ways that 
I don't know if we can fully articulate yet because it was so recently. I mean, this was our father's generation, your generations. Um, it was a very, very recent event for us. So we're still digesting a lot of what took place and we're still trying to understand how to not only communicate it amongst ourselves. And, and we, we do that sometimes very well in Punjabi, um, but translating that across into English and then communicating to a wider audience, not just a, a sick audience. And, and, we, and that's something we're going to be focusing on in the workshop as well. How can we communicate what's happened in our history and how can we look at these events and communicate them to a wider non-sick audience um, and I think a lot of the media relationship stuff comes out of that uh, and it is a very important aspect and we are still uh, in uh, even though our ideals are, are very wise and very old, sometimes we, we think that we have been around for thousands of years, but we're still a very young community um, in the UK uh, in terms of world religions, we're still very young. Um, so we're still finding our place in communicating the ideals and the messages of the gurus and taking that to a wider audience. And so doesn't that give us an opportunity as well, that, that kind of youngness gives an opportunity that I, I kind of come up with this term called the, the self-proclaimers or the, you know, the ones that suddenly emerge as being, you know, oh, he's always on the news, that guy, or you, know, you always see that guy there. And he might be talking uh, good things, but so shouldn't this kind of workshop actually send an invitation to them to say, hey, why don't you come along and we'll get together and we'll talk, talk about um, you can look at it from a perspective that we're putting across. Have you done any of that to say... I think there is definitely a, a need uh, for those types of events, but I think uh, we really do need to focus on developing the skill set within our community yeah. um, because 30 years is, uh, is a short space of time. I mean, it's a time that I've personally um, come to maturity to be able to deal with these isu issues and there is an internalized focus that we need to develop and we do need to develop these competencies so that we can empower ourselves in communication, in articulation, um, and also in, in how we understand these events and some of the, the perspective that we're going to be developing is how to look at the events of 1984 uh, through a sick lens. Randomness, though, don't we? We still rely on the, on the random application of somebody coming to an event well, rather than targeted. It can, that can be so, but I, I think it's actually important to look at putting this all together. And I think if you look at the concept of Charadi Kala and Sikhi, and if you look at, and we can say that we're looking at it at this, but the transformational aspect of it has been going on for many years, even for the past 30 years. If you look at the people who have been martyred or who have stood up and whatever, and that's both men and women. And the problem here is partly that we've left the women out of it. And uh, it seems to be a male-dominated response to 1984. And if you look at the whole Sikh history, it is not just male dominated, it's also that we've got our BBR with us. I think the important aspect that what we need to do is to say what Shamsher is saying, it is being Guru centered. So going back to what Guruji is actually saying, if we have that as the basis, we will make sort of progress in leaps and bounds. And what it is, is that sometimes our basics in terms of being Guru centered have not been got the importance or we have not given them the importance that we should have done. And it doesn't matter in what language it is. And now I think in the diaspora that we have now, that we have a golden opportunity which we're now taking forward with using the whole media, that the modern media in terms of looking at IT, the internet and so forth, that's what's making it. But we also have to be very careful, as we've had to be careful from 1984 that it's been going ahead, is those people who are the detractors who appear to be acting for us in terms of a positive sense, but actually that what we realize that the, what they are doing is actually negative, and they are the pretenders. They were there when the Gurujis were there, and that is why it is important to be open, to be transparent, and go back to the Guru principles yeah, of, shall, shall we say, good thinking and being good men. And Naam Japna. What is Naam Japna? Nam Japna is getting together and celebrating the truth and in terms of Simran, in terms of Sangat, in terms of Seva. And those are the concepts we really do need to bring to the fore and then say, yes, we're aiming for excellence.